Hey, Dave Knight here at 123 daytradecom Oh my, Friday. Ah, uh, Friday, Friday, Friday. Okay, so we just had kind of an insane move. Insane in the membrane. Remember the days I used to be able to play music without um, the stupid thing coming up. But the only thing I can play in the background is like jazz. Ah, uh, 15 minute move. It's going down to the 10 minute, two bars, five minute, three bar, three bar reversal. Yeah, I like it. Is it two yet? Not quite two. Kind of want to look between two to 205 to make a decision here. Uh, high is 94.66. Kind of crazy movement right now. We're looking at the last 20 minutes of the trading day, or last 30, excuse me. No, I said 20. All right, so let's move that out of the way. Get the 15 minute back on there, and let's look at the this is the 369 chart, and that's the 123 chart. Let's and superimpose it. Let's move it over here so we can see them both. There's MACD right here. Williams for Centaur showing selling pressure right now. Closing in. Okay, we're officially at 2 o'clock now or 1 Eastern or Central, excuse me. So what was the catalyst to make the thing go up, I wonder. Something obviously made it go up over 15 minutes, just period span of time. Be more of a technical trader than fundamental. Obviously something made that move, move up. I like it below. I don't really want to get involved in it right there. I like to see it move up and then come in. Um, let's get the screen draw tool out so you can see what I'm seeing. There's a trading channel. It might dip and then go this way. So there's some strength to the upside somehow. Kind of like to see us re attempt the high. Uh, I want to stay away from any trading until the 205 mark. 105. I'm going to give it five minutes here to. It might not do anything, actually. We'll see. Um, all right, so looking at. It's 30.02. Let's bring this over here so you can see what I'm seeing. So here is your 1R. We'll go 31. And 111 looks good on the 3P target right now. One and a half P, let's bring this back over here. One and a half P is 55 ticks today, so that's kind of our target right now. That fell out there, didn't it? All right, let's take a look and see what happened. When that market moved. So we see a blow off volume 1231 mark, which is 131. We go from R1 to R3 in 10 minutes roughly. As far as a move goes, that was uh, where's price measure it is.
226 ticks move. So that's a 2,260 tick move. It actually went higher than that. But in 10 minutes it went $2. When somebody went to war. Let's see if we see anything. no contract change so there's really nothing out there all right let's plug the highs and lows in here low of the trading session is 89.19 high is 94.66 We've been from 89.19 to 94. Actually, we've been a, we've been we've made a 12p move today. So we could go 6p down but bring it to 92.44. Easy. Hmm. Five minutes in. Ah, yeah, yeah. Which way? Which way? Which way? Lots of red volume. I think we make an initial move. It's going to go up right now. Measure it from here, 9345. All right, that didn't work. Try again one more time. Brought it both at the same price. All right, I want to release this here though. Nine three three seven. Three P move is ninety four forty eight. Call it ninety four forty seven. One and a half P right now, ninety three ninety two.
93.92, what do we got? Let's go ahead. 93.74 is 2P. Wait a minute, 93.92, that's not right. 94.11. Ninety four sixty six high. <laughs> Shit, hit the flatten button by mistake there. That's all right. I meant to hit the uh, centering button, I hit the flatten button. Really doesn't hasn't. Hmm. Upward movement. Let's try a downward side. make a move all the way back into here. So let's measure from here. 92.44 was a 6P down move. So that's what we got here. even right now. I'd like to give it some room right now. Let's get it. We'll go uh, 10 ticks above here. Be 89 for now. Wouldn't mind taking one off here. We're gonna grab this while we can. Should have one contract in now. Make sure we get a positive day on the day. We're down 60 ticks right now, and we're realized profit of 460. I'm good with this here. We want to grab some profit here. Um, 94.11. That's not right. Let's go here. What's 1.5p from our entry point? Shit, what's our entry point? Damn it, David, get with it. 
pretty close. 55 ticks. That's nah, not quite 55, but it's close enough. Let's go to 11. It's 45 ticks. 9305 is 55 right now. Ninety-three fifty-two entry point. Two P move or one and a half P is ninety ninety-two ninety-seven. Excuse me. It's all right, hey, we got we're out, we're out. I was looking at the R2 mark, that's what I decided the reversal on. That's why I went aggressive at that mark. I thought that one might be a, a a reversal mark or at least an opportunity to grab. Remember the first couple of trades, we were down 500 roughly. Second two, I came back. Third one, I was able to um, come back on that a little bit. Um, I didn't like the short. I was getting ready to cover. If I didn't cover where I covered, I would have covered right here, by the way. And I would have went short into this because the long took too long to develop here. The long here needed to move, and it needed to move quickly. It needed to come up right here, and it didn't. So that I was okay with getting out there. I was, I was getting ready to move my stop into here and reverse right in this area. But I'm good. I'm glad that I got out where I did. Sometimes discretion is a better part of valor. My brain was telling me to get out. I pushed a button to get out. Although I was thinking about moving my stop up right in here and then reversing into this. It was taking too long, too long to develop. Um, ideally, this would have been the best part to short the trade coming in. I was waiting for the five minutes to pass, though. I gave the market too much time before I entered the market. I should have entered in here. I should have just bracketed this trade, went short below, long above. That's how I should have handled this particular trade. I was glad that I made a little bit of money today on the Friday. This is going to be it for me. You know, I, I don't really have much more to share with you other than, you know, you got 30 minutes, right? You have 30 minutes of time that I believe that you can focus your energy, right? Focus. You can focus that energy for... A 30 minute period of time and trying to get yourself in tune with the market um, ideally I didn't start looking at the, the trades until I didn't start looking until about 150 should have given myself an extra five minutes this upward pressure today threw me for a loop for a while I wanted to short it coming in but I was waiting for three bars to form on the other side to see what we wanted to do. Five minutes was showing the three bars that I like to see. So if I bring over the five minute chart, I was looking at a, the three bar reversal here and then coming back the other way. Um, one, two, three, it went four. And this is where I was thinking about getting short right here at the R3 line. I don't like going long above R3, by the way. So R3, excuse me, I don't like shorting above R3. I wanted to be short below the R3 mark. Uh, it's one of my rules. I believe I have it on the board behind here. Don't, no, oh, no. Yeah, I don't like to buy below S2. And I don't like to sell above R3. So that's kind of some rules that I follow overall. So I'd like to say no selling above R3. So my my initial short that I was looking at, if I would have went short, would have been below the 94.22 mark right here. And then no buying below R2. On a down on a down day, no buying below R2. On an up day, no selling above R3. Up day, down day. However you want to look at that. So ideally, screen draw tool. Let's see here. This is S1 right here. 
and we made a move to at R3. So we went, that's a pretty nice move if you think about it. Uh, roughly 8900 It's a $5 move. This doesn't happen very often in the crude oil market, by the way. $5 move, that's a 5000 per contract move in one trading session. That's going to make bring volatility up again, by the way. Um, considerably bring it up. This kind of move here is going to bring uh, probably a 35, 36 ADR into uh, Monday's trading Sunday night into Monday. Another thing I thought about definitely in the uh, as volatility increases, you need to decrease your contract size, by the way. So as volatility increases, and right at the 3.0 mark is, is basically where I, I am kind of fluctuate between do I trade one or two contracts or one or two contract series, however you look at it. So for instance, let's say you trade three contract series, right? Um, at some point, volatility gets too high to be trading three. You need to reduce like the one. There's really no one and a half there, right? So if you're trading four, you want to reduce to two. If you're trading 10, you want to reduce to five. So at some point in your volatility, volatility even uh, Dr. Barry Byrne just put out a new energy lately. Uh, one of the dudes that I have followed over the years, uh, I think maybe I took his stuff from me. Maybe he took his stuff from me. I don't know one way or the other. It doesn't matter at this point. We all share common knowledge, uh, knowledge together. Anyway, Dr. Burns talked about the sixth energy. I've been talking about volatility forever. Volatility is a, a measurement that you have to be careful with. When volatility increases, you need to reduce your contract size, in other words. So right at that 3.0 mark, when it gets to 3.1, 3.2, yeah, it gets kind of questionable. When it gets above 4 on the ADR, you definitely, in my humble opinion, need to reduce your contract size. When you're down at the 1.0 ADR, then you want to maximize as many contracts as you can uh, to take advantage of the low volatility or sidestep trading altogether. High volatility means higher risk, so forth and so on. Lower volatility means lower risk. High volatility market, you can accumulate losses very quickly. You can bail your combine in a, in a hurry when volatility increases. Uh, all right, that's 23 minutes of me talking. I, I don't really. So let, let's review some of my, my rules that I've got on my board behind me. Volume, similar, divergence, convergence. Be careful shorting up moves without a one, two, three setup in an up day. Uh, I don't like to take short trades. No short open trades. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, only Mondays and Fridays. Uh, I don't know if that's actable or not, or not, but I don't really trade them open to the market and the crude oil market anymore. I look at the last 30 minutes of trading right now. Uh, one of my one of my big general rules is no selling above R3, no buying below S2. So you can take that to the bank right there. Um, so my first sell mark, once again, would have been below the R3 mark. No matter how I look at it, I'd like selling below. If I... Woulda, shoulda, coulda. Let's get the screen draw tool out here again. So we got this. We have this bracket, right? Then we have the two o'clock mark coming in a little after this right here. I would have been okay shorting right at that R3 line. So my open and long trade was based on waiting too long on my opening trade basically so I should have not waited five minutes here that's where my mistake happened uh, with the 30 minute window I think we're going to be okay with just going one or two minutes to make a decision and start entering the trade between any time after 202 201 Eastern Time um, Central 101 102 or something like that so you you've got a you got a market right here. So you have your channel channel breakdown right here. Comes in right at the 101 mark, 102 mark. And here I am trying to go along right in here. 
Um, I really didn't let that one, two, three set up there. So I should have waited on the long signal. That was not a good long. I should have held off on the long. The short should have been my only signal today. And I should have not taken a loss on the trading session. So this should have been a positive of uh, maybe even 1K or more. Mistakes. Yes, you're going to make them. Uh, try to recognize your mistake as quickly as you can and make a move. Five minutes to Wapner. I don't like trading the last five minutes of a Friday. This is my ideal time on a Friday. We had a nice up move and then down move. I mean, where is it going to settle? You know, it got to it was. It got to. It's got to. Got to. Got to. It's got to do nothing. It can do whatever it wants. It can go up to hundred dollars a barrel if it wants to right now. Uh, it could come back down here and go back up here. It can settle right in here. I mean, who knows? I am not smart enough to know where the market's going to settle. I know that the strength of the market has been more long than short. You can look at that. Uh, obviously, if you're following any of the crude oil market, you know that ahead of time, right? You know that if you're looking at the daily charts. We have. Uh, been going up. I'm going to get rid of some of these. We'll keep that one. Get rid of. Keep that on. All right. So we'll keep those two on. But if you look at the daily chart, we've been nothing but up since roughly right here, right? December 2nd. We've made our last run to the upside. You know, and if you're looking at the Biden administration, When did he take over? Right in here. This was the pandemic. Here's where Biden starts taking over for Trump right in here. Pretty ugly, huh? Here's the Trump administration holding the line of between $50 to $60 a barrel. Here's the Biden administration causing us to be $4 a gallon at the pump right now. Look at that up in there right there. This is a weekly chart, by the way. Formulate a plan. Usually I like to formulate my plan of attack on a Sunday night, um, sometimes Friday into a Saturday. Depends if the uh, the platform's open. A lot of times when this platform is, is, is uh, re uh, is out of commission, you can't use it on a Saturday. Can open it up on Sunday right when the market opens you can start looking at it again <laughs> CTS does some updates on uh, on Saturdays normally so sometimes looking Friday afternoon or Sunday evenings when I kind of formulate my strategy how I want to attack the market for the week um, up until the day the 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 the, the side the $90 handle was the was the the mark. Looks like the day we broke through the 90 handle. Yeah, we never really looked at 90 today, yeah. Never really went down to the 90 mark. It was down the day before and it went up overnight. It was at 90 at midnight, roughly, and it really didn't see the. Look at that overnight move. 
overnight into the day, it really didn't look back at all. And then the last 15 minutes of the trading session, roughly, in 10 minutes time, what, 1230 to, we say here, 1230 to 130, or 1230 to 1240, it made a, a $2 move, $5 move altogether today, if you think about it, from low to high. More than a 12p up move, by the way. And today that was 443 on my uh, chart today. But it was more than a $5 move from low to high today. It's pretty big volatility. All right. That'll do it. Dave not here at 123 Day Trade. 30 minutes. 30 minute day trading. That's the idea that I'm formulating in my head and working out. We'll talk to you later. Bye now.